Welcome to this video where we're going to be taking a look at a faction focus on Grey Knights. We're going to be looking at how to play the Grey Knights in Warhammer 40,000 10th edition. I'm Stephen Box from Vanguard Tactics. This is Michael Costello. Michael, how are you doing? I'm great, thank you. Um, I think this is one of the most exciting armies to play it in 10th really edition. Yeah. Um, so buckle up because there's so much to learn here uh, and you're going to come away with uh, so much knowledge yes. for this army. Now, normally in the past, I've interviewed you. Yeah. We're going to swap it over today. Yeah, sounds good to me. Because um, Grey Knights, well, I've got a thing for. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've been doing my homework. And hopefully, I can give you guys some really good insights on, you know, some core synergies of the army that you might want to include in your army lists. So, Steve, um, what is the faction rule for Grey Knights? What do we get for being a Grey Knight? Okay, so although the Grey Knights are a type of Space Marine, they do not get Oath of Moment. Oh, okay. so that's one clarification. Okay. They get their own rule called Teleport Assault. All right, okay. Now, if you're unfamiliar with Grey Knights, the very long and short of it, these are, I suppose, the elite versions of Space Marines that are dedicated to hunting and killing demons. Yeah. That's what they do. They teleport down, they turn up when the, you know, where the fight is at the thickest, yeah. and they eradicate the demons. And I think, actually, the army really does feel like that. Yeah. yeah okay. Their army rule is teleport assault. Okay. Which basically allows you to pick up to a certain number of units that have the teleport assault keyword. Right, okay. And you'll see that on your data sheet where it says abilities. Yeah. Because not all units in the army have teleport assault. Oh, uh, okay. Okay, so not, for example, like a Rhino doesn't have it, which is very different because then all of a sudden you've got some units in your army that don't essentially have a faction rule. Okay, all right. But it is still strong. Yeah. It's like, in one essence, there's restrictions, but there is mighty power. So what do you get to do with this Teleport Assault? Okay, so those units you can pick, and there are, depending on the size game you play, okay. so you've got Combat Patrol, you can pick one, Incursion, you can pick two, Strike Force, you can pick three, Onslaught, you can pick four units. Right, okay, Strike Force is like 2,000 points, yeah. Incursion maybe 1,000, so yeah. uh, for us, Strike Force is the most common one you'll see us play on stream. So we'll go with that reference. Okay. At the end of your opponent's turn, yeah. I can pick three of my units and put them into Deep Strike. Okay. Okay. Yeah, because that was the problem before, is that with Deep Strike, you come down nine inches yeah. away, but then you're stuck there. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. This allows the army to feel incredibly mobile. Yeah. And really fight where they want to. I like that a lot. I mean, they're the masters of teleportation. They're all psychers, you know, that they should feel this powerful and mobile. Yeah. That's very powerful. And I take it, because you've gone up in your opponent's turn, Yeah. you can come down in... Your next turn? That's exactly right. You come down in the reinforcement step of your next turn, yeah. With three units. Yeah, with three okay. units. Okay, and you could have some units in reserve already. Yep. So you could come down with like loads. See, that's really cool. Yep. That's really cool. And there are ways to manipulate it. Right, okay. As well, which is super cool. Um, and kind of get more movement shenanigans. But we're going to come okay. on to that. Okay. Now, off screen, we had a bit of a debate, didn't we? Yes. About whether you could use this turn one if yeah. you were going first. So I would love that to be clarified. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who knows? Yeah. Because it rules is written, but then also in the core yeah. book. So I think if you're playing this at home, mm -hmm. just assume that if your opponent goes first yes. and you were to go up in deep strike, you probably wouldn't be able to come down until turn two. Yeah. Yeah. Just by all the other rules of the it, game. It doesn't say it's deep strike. No. But it, it's kind of similar wording, so just to be safe. Yeah, who knows? Yeah. It'd be great to get like an errata on that. Or if it's not changed or FAQ'd, then that is the intent maybe. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That you could come down. Yeah. And obviously that's only ever going to matter 50% of the time when exactly. your opponent goes first. Exactly. Okay. So that's the army rule. So that's okay. pretty good. Right. Let's talk about the detachment rule. Yes. Okay. So what do we get in the index um, for these Grey Knights? So they're... Detachment rule is called teleport shunt. Okay. All right. Now, this allows you, if you have the deep strike keyword. Yeah. Okay. Specifically the deep strike keyword. Okay. All right. That you can advance automatic six inches. Very nice. And you move as if you had the fly keyword. Okay. So you're kind of almost teleporting through stuff. Yeah. That's even more mobile. It is very mobile. Okay, anything else? That's it. Okay. So that is basically what you get. Cool. Six inch auto advance. You know, it makes the army very, very fast and mobile. Yeah. But of course, there's going to be limitations because you can't advance and charge. No. 
and there isn't any advance in charge aside from one data sheet. Okay. So one data sheet can advance in charge. We'll come on to that one later. Okay. Um, and not many of the guns have assault right. either. Okay. Most of them are rapid fire, as we'd expect okay. from a storm bolter. Okay. But there are ways and means, and we will come on to exactly how you can still. Because remember, if in the core rules, if you advance, you can't charge. Yeah. If you advance, you also can't shoot unless you've got the assault keyword. Right, okay, cool. So great faction rule, great detachment rule. Um, let's take a look at some enhancements. But before we continue, I'd like to give a quick shout out to our sponsor, The Outpost. If you're looking for a great deals on your miniatures, paints and gaming supplies, you, we've got you covered. Their wide variety of exceptional service makes them the go-to destination for all hobby needs. So don't wait, check out The Outpost today. Link in the description below. All right, enhancements. Now, there are four for the Grey Knights. There are four. Four. So remember, in your army, you can only take up to three, yeah. and they can only go on characters that aren't epic heroes. And they're pointed. And they're pointed upgrades. Yeah. So what's the first one, Steve? OK, so the first one we're going to look at is first to the fray. OK. If your unit has been set up into Deep Strike, right. you can essentially come down turn one. <laughs> Pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Turn one. Yeah. Wow, OK. Yeah. That's, wow. That's really good. So yeah, obviously reserves can only normally come in from the second battle, battle round onwards. Yep. You can just t turn up turn one. That's it. Okay, if you're playing against Grey Knights, um, make sure you have something it's, screening because this could it's be great. devastating. Yeah. Okay, is there a... It just says that unit can be set up via Deep Strike in the re uh, reinforcement step of your first, second or third movement phase, regardless of their emission rules. Now it does say here, your movement phase. Okay. So that does mean you wouldn't be able to use the... Rapid ingress. Rapid ingress, mm. turn one. Because it does say okay. your one. Cool. Good catch. Good catch. That's what we're here for. Yeah, I like it. Get them catches. Yeah. Is there a character maybe that you'd think of putting this on? We can go into more detail later, of course. Yeah. Oh, um, I think you're already throwing me off there. Uh, okay. okay, so <laughs> who would I put this on? Um, do you know what? Funny enough, I haven't actually took it in any of my test games. Okay. No, it's okay. one of those that... it. it of yeah. course it's powerful. Yeah. Whether it's because I just don't have the points for it. Mm. If I did, I'd probably just put it on yeah. like um, a brother captain or a yeah. librarian or somebody like that in my army. Yeah. But okay. I don't think, I think there's other ones I prefer. Oh, okay. So. All right. Okay. It hasn't made my list yet, which let's be honest, if that one isn't making the list, then, you know. Oh, I'm excited now. To hear the rest, yeah. Um, so what is the next one? Okay, so the next one, I am going to absolutely butcher the wording here, so please forgive me. Domine Libra Dominica. Dominica? Demonica. Demonica. There we go. I told you to butcher it. I did. There we have it. You can comment below and troll <laughs> as much as you wish. Okay, I'm fine with that. All right, so this allows you, and it's the Grey Knight model only. Okay. okay? Every time you make a melee attack, you mm -hmm. get plus one to wound, and if you're attacking a demon, you get plus one damage. Oh, okay, so you always get plus one to wound? Yeah. And if you're attacking a demon, you get plus one damage? Yes. Um, so it just buffs the character, so maybe it's one of those nice-to-have ones? Yes. This I would definitely put on a Grand Master in Ooh. Dread Knight armor, and we'll come on to why later. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Nice. Well, let's have a look at the, the, the next two. Okay, so the next one is called The Sigil of... Uh, exigence? Exigence. Exigence, yes. sure, that one. Um, basically, once per battle, yep. when you, when I'm targeted from a ranged attack, okay. Okay, I can either remove the bearer's unit from the battlefield and set it up again. Yeah, sorry, not either. I can basically remove my unit from the battlefield. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and then set it back up again anywhere on the battlefield that's more nine away from enemy units. Right. Uh, if the bear is no longer eligible target, your opponent can select new targets for that attack. So. Okay, cool. So anyone previous with a, anyone um, who's played a previous edition will remember that this was an ability back then. Yeah. Um, but this is so if I shoot you, you just disappear and go yep. somewhere else on the board. And one more little interplay on this: it does say if the unit is no longer eligible as a target, you can pick a new unit. Uh, okay. So I could just put myself down somewhere, and depending on angles and terrain and line of sight, I could make some of my unit eligible, or some of your oh, unit right. eligible. Okay, yeah. yeah. Okay, so that I still have to shoot you, Yeah. but maybe only one of my models can do so. Yeah. That's Obviously, that's... it's not going to affect a knight or something like that, no, but... That's pretty nasty. That's not pretty good, nasty. right? <laughs> now, I have the perfect model to put this on. Yeah? Yes. Okay. And it is a brother 
champion. I think that's what they're called, a brother champion. Brotherhood champ champion? I yeah. think so, yeah. Brotherhood champion. The normal guy that's basically just with a sword. Just a normal dude that's like really good in combat. Okay. Yeah. Right. He's... That's the unit that's going to go on. Okay. Yeah, and then right. it's going to affect a unit of my strike marines. Right, okay, because he leads that unit. This combo for me is kind of like an auto-include in my army. Okay. All right, in all okay. the test games I've played, I love this unit. Okay. Cool. Anyway, so uh, more on that all later. Right. All right. The next one is called Inescapable Wrath. Okay. Add one to charge rolls made for the bearer's unit. That's not bad. This actually has made my list a lot. Yeah. I, yeah. I, well, I guess if you're going up in the air all the time and you're coming back down, you're actually getting five turns, yep. possibly more, of um, doing this. Going right? up and down, up and down, up and down. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, that's an extra potentially five inches over the course of the game. So, I, yeah. can, see, I can kind of see why. Well, you're making all of a sudden nine inch charges become eight inch charges. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So, this goes on for me just a regular Grandmaster in Terminator armor. All right. Ooh. That's what it goes on. Cool. Tell you. All right. Now. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, that's the enhancements. Some real crackers in there. So, let's have a look at some stratagems. Let's do it. With the release of Warhammer 40,000 10th edition at Vanguard Tactics, we've put together the perfect course for you. If you're already playing 9th edition, but you want to seamlessly transition into the new edition, leave behind everything you know about 9th and understand everything you need to know about 10th, then this short course is going to be ideal. We break down all the complexities and give you step-by-step -step guidance on how to really make the most from 10th edition. We're going to help you understand all the basics of the game and then some top tips along the way to help you really get the most from your army and your playing experience. And if that's something you want to do and get signed up on our short course, which you can study in your own time, then do check out the links below and get signed up to our Accelerator program. What's the first stratagem you got for me, Steve? Mm, it's called Radiant Strike, Michael. Okay. Yes. And basically it's the fight phase. Grey Knight Psyche unit, which is kind of all of them, yeah. that you're going to want to use it on. Yeah. Okay. All of my psychic attacks now have devastating wounds ability. Okay. Now, <laughs> all of the swords, okay, that are on the Terminators, the Paladins, the Strike Marines, they're all psychic weapons. Right. Okay. So they all get Devastating Wounds ability, which means on a critical wound roll of a six, it will do that many mortal wounds instead of damage. Okay, so I have to ask, what is the damage on the most of their Nemesis weapons? Two. Two, okay. So every six to wound is two mortal wounds. This is two CPs. Two command points. So it is expensive. It's very expensive. Um, but if you need to crack like um, you know, a big model yeah. or a unit that's really tough outside of against mortals, yeah. then that's a really good strategy. It can be. Yeah. I've used it as not much as I thought I would, though. Okay. Which is interesting. Okay, interesting. Yeah. Okay. Very good. What's our next stratagem? Okay, so I'm gonna have to read this one. It's called the prognosticated arrival. <laughs> yeah. Have I butchered that one? No, you prog prognosticated, yeah. Prog, no, prognosticated, you're correct. Right. <laughs> Love Grey Knights. The 1CP arrival stratagem, okay. This allows me to set up my Psyche unit in my movement phase three inches away from your units instead of nine, but I won't be able to charge. Okay, so you can still shoot. Yeah, still do Psychic attacks. Okay, any particular like, tactical uses for this, do you think? Yeah, if you've left an objective and you've only got like a, mm. you know, a little small amount of OC, Interesting. I can beam on in with some strike marines or some yeah. terminators that also have a very high OC. Yeah. Beam on in three inches away, my objective, how about that? Or I've just drew the card behind enemy lines, yeah. beam on in. Yeah. Maybe I've got a, for example, if I've drew the card, if I'm playing tactical, mm. and I've gone for the one where I've got like deploy teleport homers, yeah. maybe you've screened me out real well nine inches and I can beam on in, get behind enemy lines and deploy teleport homer. And forgo my shooting phase. You can't stop this man. No, they're in. <laughs> okay, great strat. Great it's strat. fantastic, yeah. All right. The well, true masters of Deep Strike. <laughs> really are. So the next one is called Death from the Warp. If I've advanced or mm -hmm. Deep Strike or Teleport Assaulted, yeah. for one CP, all of my ranged weapons yeah. get the Assault keyword. Okay. And I get plus one to hit. Okay, right. So I'm seeing now where you're... Because most of the units in your army, they can automatically advance six inches. Correct. Uh, and get fly. Yeah. And now you are eligible to shoot with them because their weapons are assault. Correct. That's really good. And the plus one hits really nice as well. Mm -hmm. Just for a bit of extra efficiency. Yeah, very nice stratagem. I like great, it. great, isn't it? Any particular units you'd probably look at using this on? Yes. The... Um... 
baby carriers. The baby carriers. The, the Nemesis Dread Knights. Yes. Okay. All right. Those. I'm, 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 just, uh, I'm really looking forward to talking about the units. Yes. Now because I think you've got some real, um, real good ones. Got some good combos in there for you. Yeah. Okay, so the next one is Haloed in Soulfire. Okay. It's a 2 CP stratagem. Okay. And this allows me, if I've basically deep striked in that turn or used Teleport Assault, mm -hmm. you cannot shoot me unless you are within 12 inches. Okay. <laughs> cool. <laughs> but I have to declare this in my movement phase. Right. So I okay. beam on in. Pop the strat. Yeah. Obviously, until um, it says yeah. until the start of your next movement phase is active. So. Yeah. Okay. So it's there's no sort of gotcha on this because you declare early um, with this stratagem in your movement phase. And important to note that you can't use the rapid ingress and then this stratagem to make yourself untargetable in your opponent's turn. Yeah, but it does mean you won't be able to Overwatch me. Yeah. If I set up like twelve point one away, yeah. you couldn't Overwatch because I'm not targetable. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I like that. I like yep. that. Or yeah. there's any of those weird abilities which allow you to shoot mm. in my... You know, sometimes yeah. you like use a model, the rest of your unit can shoot those yes. sorts of strats, where yeah. you're still untargetable. Yeah. And yeah. I would use this on a Nemesis Grandmaster. Uh, and his unit? Or do you mean a Dread Knight? Sorry, a Dread Knight. Okay. That's who I meant. A, okay. a Grandmaster in Dread Knight armor. Yeah. yeah. That's who I'd put this on. Okay. When he comes in. It's good. Yeah, that sounds pretty scary. It's spicy. Yeah, okay. Mm. All right, well, uh, from that one, let's carry on to the next one. Right, I'm about to butcher another one. It's Mists of Demos. Demos. Whatever. Yeah. Sure, you know it. You, <laughs> you guys can read it. Comment down below. Yeah. <laughs> when, used to it by now. <laughs> look, when you've got dyslexia, the, the way you just see a word and you just go, that's roughly how it sounds, that will do. Yeah. Um, anyway, Warhammer don't exactly make it easier. Anyway, so one CP. Um, <laughs> In your opponent's movement phase, this is my favorite stratagem. Most used stratagem, I would say, for me. Okay. If you, Michael, yep. as my opponent, yep. ends a move within nine inches, a normal move, an advance move, a fullback move. Okay. Right? Within nine, yep. I can move my unit six inches. Okay. Or go back into deep strike. After I've moved. Yeah. That's Stupid. Well, basically, <laughs> yeah, if I have the deep strike ability, I can be placed back into strategic reserves for the deep strike, right? So, yeah. That makes that unit impossible to pin down. Like, if you've got this, like, oh, you know, world eaters, Angron's flew forward. <laughs> He's thinking, oh, I'm going to go and eat Drago. Drago's like, see ya. Vroom. And then just comes back next <laughs> God. Yeah. So you could actually, with this stratagem combined with your teleport assault, uh, in a strike force mission, have up to potentially four units. Sure. In your opponent's turn, going back up into the sky. Sure. Going down. Oh my god. Why not? Sounds great to me. Oh, okay. okay. Next one is one CP. It's called True Silver Armor. Okay. This is essentially armor contempt. Reduce the AP by one. Right. Okay. On income and attacks. Yeah. Okay. Shooting or fight phase. Cool. And that one's on any Grey Knight unit, is it? Yeah, pretty. Yeah, yeah it is any Grey Knight unit, yeah. All right. Okay. Very nice. They're the stratagems. All right. Let's look at some units. Let's take a moment to appreciate Colorforge, our fantastic sponsor. Their range of spray paints has become our go-to for making our miniatures come to life quickly and efficiently. The quality and variety of colors they offer are truly unmatched, providing a smooth application for stunning effects every time. Check out Colorforge for your next hobby project. What's the first unit you want to have a look at, Steve? We have to look at Drago. It's... We do. I've made my own Drago. He looks yeah, beautiful. Very, okay. very cool. Yes, yeah. Drago. I think he's up there nearly as an auto-include. Okay. Nearly. Okay. But I think you probably take him. He can join Paladins or Terminators. Makes okay. sense, yeah. He is a B-stick in combat. Six attacks, flat flamage. Flat flamage, flat damage three at minus four AP. Now that is some flamage. That is anti steaman flamage at two plus as well. Oh. Um, and uh, yeah, he's a psychic attack. So you could make it all basically devastating wounds. Yeah, yeah, okay. So Bellacor. I like it. Sorry, buddy. Yeah, you're not going to like this guy. Um, anyway, he's got teleport assault, all that stuff, but he also gives the unit a four plus feel no pain against mortal wounds. This wow. is why I think he's an auto include due to stern guard, everything else that's out there that can deal mortal mm. wounds. He's will keep your paladins. In fact, I probably put him with terminators rather than paladins. Right. Any particular reason why? They're cheaper. Okay. 
and I think it's just a... Uh, they have another type of defensive ability. Oh, Paladins do. Paladins do, oh, okay, over right. Terminators. So you're, you're sort of spreading the defensive abilities across. Yeah. Right, that, that does make sense, yeah. Yeah, so sure, if you want to, you know, try and mortal wound this unit, go for it, but I get a 4-plus mm. of pain. Yeah, I love that. I mean, that ability itself is, is so powerful in, in what we can expect from 10th. Yeah, but my overall goal is if I do have the points for Paladins, mm. I'm probably going to put them in over Terminators. Yeah but I would happily take a reduction to put them with him. Yeah, and I guess the, the beauty of characters is you assign them to units before the battle begins. So yeah. if you needed that one hammer unit that survives, you, put, you can him put him with paladins. Of course. Yeah, brilliant. Uh, anything yeah. else? Yes, once per battle, you can add three to your charge roll, okay? <laughs> if it was set up using reinforcements, basically the deep strike ability. Add three, okay. Yeah, cool. so beams on in, boom, add three to that charge roll. So it's just a six inch charge? Six inch charge. Maybe spend a reroll on it if you need to. Wow. Once okay. per battle though. You do have to use it when you declare it though. Bit of a shame. Uh, okay, right. Right. Okay. So, so I'm you declare use it before you roll the dice, yeah. basically. Fair enough. I think, you know, we've got to be a bit yeah. balanced, don't we? Whatever. <laughs> They're cool. They're green eyes. Okay. Okay. Who's next. Next one is Voldus. Uh, oh, so one thing to say about Drago as well, he does have a little cool shooty attack. Okay. It's all right. Like a psychic one. Yeah, like a. it's right. three attacks, hits on two, right. strength six, okay. commands two, two damage. Okay. So it's all right, little profile. Yeah. Uh, Voldus, okay, so what he does, his psychic ability is when he's leading a unit, gives minus one to hit on a unit. Okay. I would definitely put him in paladins. Right. To make them minus one to hit. Okay, cool. Okay, he's also got a flat damage three thunder hammer. Very nice. Flat flamage. And then he's strength 10. Nice. AP 2. He's decent well, in you, combat. You crack vehicles even. Yeah. yeah, and basically when you're selected to fight, you do mortal wounds uh, on the charge as well, basically. Okay, in the, nice. He does mortal wounds in the fight phase. Right. Yeah, and it, it's extra bonuses if you're a demon. So he's pretty good. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Next up is probably the star of the show. Okay. Okay. The Brotherhood Champion. Mm. And you think, oh, just that measly guy is not going to make my list. He has the fight's first keyword, and when he's leading the unit, gives a unit fight first. Damn. He can join strike marines. Yeah. He, I think he can join probably some other units. Yeah, purgators, but I think you put them with the strikes. Okay. You give this guy the enhancement. Okay, now when he fights characters, he's got precision. Okay. Uh, he's like five attacks, strength six, AP two, two damage. Which enhancement? Um, you give him the enhancement, which means if you shoot this unit, it uh, beams right. away. The sigil, yeah, okay. Because you yeah. cannot charge a unit with fight first. No. When so you've got you ten, have to shoot it. you have to shoot it. Right. And if you want to shoot it, boom, yeah? Great, Very love good. it. Very good. So he protects the strike marines. Well and strike played, marines. sir. I know, thank you. Great choice, sir. Great choice. <laughs> Um, and against characters, he rerolls the hit and rerolls the yeah, wounds. I like it. I He's like good. It yeah. He's very good. Very good. Yeah. Yeah. I like him. Strike Marines. Correct me if I'm wrong. They've got a unit ability to make an objective sticky. St yeah. So it's still theirs even if they move off it. Yep. Well, uh, that. You see, I like that a lot with your teleporting stuff. That's. Yeah. That's really good. It is very good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's very okay. good because of the way that enhancement works as mm. well. You redeploy instantly, mm. so therefore you could jump on another objective mm. out of danger, mm. and therefore you basically stick in an objective. Next command phase. You yes. Hold it. Yeah. You'll make it yours until someone takes it. Ooh, there's a lot of interplay. There's, uh, there's almost. Uh, this feels like one of the indexes that has possibly the most synergy. I love it. Yeah. I love this army. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, all right. I really do. Okay, next up is Stern. Yeah. Another great character that can join Terminators or Paladins. Yeah. When you roll a critical wound roll with him and his unit, mm -hmm. every time you roll that critical wound, you do a mortal wound in addition to damage. Yeah? In okay. addition to damage. <laughs> okay. Um, so if you pop the strat on this unit in Paladins, yeah. every six is a devastating wound plus an additional mortal wound. So that's three more to wounds per six to wound from yeah. his unit. Yeah. Okay. Mm. All right. He ain't. He, he's not messing around. He's okay in combat as well, um, and he can stand back up. Okay. When he's killed. Yeah. Great. Pretty good. Yeah. Nice. He's nice. nice. Right. Let's talk about the Nemesis Grandmaster okay. in Dread Knight armor. Yep. Okay. So their weapons are okay. 
Right. They do suffer a little bit of ranged. I like the heavy incinerator. Mm -hmm. That'd be the one I'd go for. 2d6 mm -hmm. shots, str uh, strength 6, minus 1, 1 damage. It's Torrin. Yeah, Torrin. So therefore, it's flamer. You automatically hit. Mm -hmm. um, and he's got the heavy side cannon. 6 shots, hitting on 3s, strength 10, minus 1, 3 damage. That's okay. very good. Yeah. Nice yeah. to see a sort of anti-tank profile in there. The AP1 is the problem. Yeah. It really is. You do struggle to crack big, big targets. Then you've got a Demon Hammer or a Greatsword. The mm. Demon Hammer is a little bit more damaging. It's stronger, better AP, mm. but you don't get as many attacks and you've got no sweep and you hit on fours rather than basically threes. Okay, right. Yeah. Right. And then the, so you go for the sword, do you think, for the, the sweep oh, option? or The thing is, because one of the weaknesses of the army is killing vehicles, right. I kind of am tempted to take a hammer. Yeah, cool. But... I think I would do that on the other ones, and on him, I would take a sword. Right, okay. The, his, he has another ability, okay, mm -hmm. when he targets monsters or vehicles, okay, in the fight phase, mm -hmm. you can reroll the hit roll, reroll the wound roll, and reroll the damage roll, which is right. probably why I would take a sword. Yes. And also, um, when you use a stratagem on him, it's only ever one CP, regardless of the cost. So I would have him in deep strike. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I would beam down. Mm-hmm. You could put first of the fray on him, for, for, so he could come down turn one. Yeah. And then you pop the strap, which is normally two CPs, but now is one, and you're over 12 inches away, you can't be shot for a turn. Mm-hmm. So he's just like a cheeky gun battery that can't be shot for a turn. Yeah. It's pretty good. Cool. Yeah. Okay. That's pretty strong. Yeah. yeah. Okay, next up, we've got the Grandmaster. These guys, I think, are just incredible. Yeah. I'd be tempted to take three. Oh, wow. Paladins, you know, Terminators, you name it. They allow you to basically normal modifier characteristics to that unit and test that are made. That's very good. I think one of the best applications is that your unit's AP can't be reduced mm -hmm. by anything. I really like that. And of course, because yep. I mean, the movement doesn't really matter because you just jump around the battlefield. Um, but yeah, I really like ignoring characteristic modifiers. It's good. Cool. Okay. Really good. And once per battle, um, one unit from your army with this ability can be targeted with a stratagem for free. Excellent. Even if it's already been targeted as well. Yeah, that yeah is even once, if you've already used the strat on someone else. That is once per battle, though. Once per battle. Right. Which is why I think I could take three. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I love it. They're That's, so good. Yeah, really good. Really yeah. strong. And of course, you can pop an enhancement on them because they're not an epic hero. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Next up is the Brotherhood Librarian. Okay. This guy may be the best assassin in the game. Okay. Yeah. All right, you ready for this? Yeah. He has a focused witchfire attack called Purge Soul. It yeah. has precision. It's psychic and it's hazardous. Okay? okay. It is only one shot. You hit on threes. It's strength six, minus two, flat three damage, though. That's good. It's pretty good. That's good. It is yeah. pretty tasty. Yeah. Um, why wouldn't you like that? Do you know what I mean? Mm. And then also you've got Vortex of Doom in your shooting phase. You can select one enemy unit with 18 on a D6. On a one, you take some more wounds. Um, on a two to five, the unit suffers D3 mortal wounds. Yeah. On a six, you take two D6 mortal wounds. Yes. So I roll a six. 2d6. Yeah, that's a two, and then a d, then a six. So two dice, add them together, that's how many mortal wounds you're taking. Ooh. If I roll a six, though, okay? Easy there, that's a lot of mortal wounds. If I roll a one, though, I suffer d6 mortal wounds. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> that's... Mm. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. So he's got a good kind of like... Well, um, knowing you, Steve. That'd he's be a one not long for this world, is he's he? He's not, nor his unit. He's going to absolutely <laughs> nuke them out of this. Yeah. <laughs> so is it his unit suffers them all? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, right. Okay. Yeah. So you can just kill his unit while he... Sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah, this... Cool. You, it's like his unit. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Okay, so next up we've got Brotherhood Terminators. Mm -hmm. The great thing about there, they've got a good attack profile, four attacks, hits on three, strength six, AP two, minus two. Cool. Um, they have lethal hits. Right. Which is kind of why you don't often use that devastating wound ability, that stratagem, as much as you would I if see. you were using them. Yeah. Um, the great thing this unit's good for is they get plus one to their OC when they've got a banner. So now each model's got OC three. Three. Okay. Yep. And they've got a North... Narthesium. That's the one. Yeah. Well said, Michael. Thank you. Um, sure. I'm here. Um, I can basically return a destroyed model to my unit each command phase. Nice. Nice. I mean, they're pretty resilient as it is. So being able to bring one back. Yeah. yeah very good. In your command phase, you can run, yeah, to the bearer's unit. With OC3, that you can make a lot of plays for missions. Especially when you can beam down within three inches. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Okay, next up, we've got the... We'll look at Paladins next, because that's okay. the other kind of key unit, I would say. Uh, you can take up to ten of these in a unit. <laughs> 
All right. Again, they can have plus one OC as well, so they can go up to OC two. Oh, okay. They hit on twos rather than threes, and if your strength of your attacks being my opponent is greater than mine, then I'm minus one to wound. Right, greater than your toughness. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And their toughness five? Yeah, T5, yeah, with five. three wounds each, yeah. Yeah, anything that's strength six or above is mm -hmm. going to be minus one to wound them. And this is all the time. This isn't like whilst the character's joined or whatever, it's just your minus one to wound. Oh, wow. But remember I told you about Voldus? Yeah. So he now makes unit minus one to hit, minus one to wound. Very nice. Yeah. Very so nice. in yeah. my big brain play, yeah. I've got my nemesis grandmaster that comes down that can't be shot because yeah. you're not within 12. Yeah. I've got another unit that might be on the table. If you move within nine, I'm going to beam off the table. Yeah. I've got my other unit that you can't shoot or charge. Yeah. Because they've got fights first or disappear if you shoot them. Yeah. yeah. And I've got this unit that's minus one to hit, minus one to wound. Okay. And I've got Drago's unit with a four plus four no pain. Okay. Cool. Against mortals. So there's a lot of like... This is fine. It creates a, a huge tactical problem for you yes. of decision making of where yeah. you're going to set up your models you need to move you cannot yeah. like you as a shooting army you can't just sit back and let this army do what it wants no. you need to take the fight to them yeah and that's kind of what they want which is i think creates some really cool interplays yeah agreed yeah agreed so let's take a look at the nemesis dread knight now okay they've got a cool rule michael by the, by the way they move eight so when they advance they'll be moving 14, 14 yeah. yeah they can advance and shoot and charge. Okay. And fall back. Okay. So this you, this yeah. model is eligible to shoot and declare a charge in a turn which it advanced or fell back. Very nice. Very nice. 14 inch move with fly, of course. Yeah. Because of that, that, that cool teleport shunt rule. Mm hmm. Yeah. Very nice. I like it. It's good, right? Yeah. Very good. Very good. Uh, what are they defensively? What was their sort of. Two up save. Okay. Eight That's wounds. Really strong. Sorry, 13 wounds. 13 wounds. Okay. Toughness eight. Um, right. Two plus save, four up in button. So they're pretty okay. tanky. They're pretty tanky, yeah. yeah. I like it. I like it. So that concludes. Uh, the Dreadnought's okay as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I think there could be some play for a Dreadnought. He gives infantry uh, reroll ones to hit and reroll ones to wound within an aura of six inches. Both? Yeah. Because there's no other way of getting nope. rerolls in the game. Yeah. So yeah. that's a nice little cheeky interplay yeah. there. A couple of las cannons on him will certainly help deal with those anti vehicles. Mm. Uh, the inceptors are cool. You know, I said earlier there could be a unit you might play the assault uh, ability on right. if you advance. It's right. probably these. They move 12, so they're going another oh, wow. six. Oh, yeah. yeah. So that means they 18. are 18 inches, okay? Yeah. Turn all of my psi cannons. So I'd probably have two psi cannons in the unit yeah. or two incinerators. Yeah. All storm bolters on all on all the rest. Yeah. All those rapid fire two shots become assault. Yeah. Pretty good. Cool. Um, get the plus one to hit as well. And then in your shooting phase, after I've shot, if I'm not within engagement range, I can make another normal move of six inches, mm. but I can't charge. Mm. So I'm now going twenty four inches. So I need to get behind enemy lines. Yeah, no problem. I can do it with this unit. Yeah. Okay. Or I could go eighteen and do an action because I'm still eligible to shoot if I use that stratagem. Cool. Yes, yeah, cool. Sure. Sure. I haven't used them yet, but I, st I see there's plays. Yes. Yeah. And I think that's true about this army. Loads of tools in the toolbox. Yeah, this is, yeah. You okay. want to talk about a character. I did want to talk about um, Castellan Crow, because yeah. um, I love the model. He's great. Um, and I've always loved him in, in any previous editions of the game. Mm -hmm. What's good about him? Um, so, what he's got here is, if he leads a unit, he yeah. adds one to the attack's characteristic, characteristic of Purifying Flame. Okay, now remember, you might look at this and think this is pretty bad, but every single model can yes. cast Purifying Flame in the unit of Purgators. Yeah, yeah purifiers, purifiers, yes. Sorry, yeah. Purifiers. But they're all equipped with that weapon. Exactly. So they're all doing it. It's three shots per, so now it becomes four shots. For him, he has more shots, I think. Oh, than right, okay. okay. Yeah, but still. Um, and it's got anti-infantry anti 2+. plus. Yeah, she's wound on twos. AP1. So yep. that's, like, fantastic. Yep. Uh, and then once per turn, um, you can change the damage. Um, of any wound that goes through on him, pass his save to zero. Yeah. yeah. I think the purifiers, again, could be a really good one for that stratagem if they advance. Yeah. Because then it would make all of their psychic attacks, assault, yeah, get a bit more range up. Yeah, and as well. That's a lot of shooting coming out of that unit. It really is, yeah. yeah, yeah cool. And uh, you ignore cover on that as well. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it really does massively increase by including him. I think mm. if you do want to take purifiers, you absolutely yeah. take Crow. Yeah. Because you're doubling your efficiency, I think. Yeah. I yeah, think they might awesome. be one attack only on purifiers. It okay. could be two. Uh, but, yeah, you really do ramp up the amount of attacks, yeah, right? Awesome. So awesome. There we have it. Okay, so um, last question. We've covered it a fair bit. Um, 
Grey Knights, obviously, quite powerful army. Yeah. Um, probably one of the more powerful indexes. You know, that there are some indexes that might seem a little less good compared to some of the other ones, like maybe Death Guard. Um, but these guys look like the cream of the crop. Um, how do you think these guys play the mission? So I think... Powerful wise, mm. I think they're powerful at playing the mission. Yeah, okay. I don't think they're amazingly powerful at killing things. Right. Yeah. Yes. With this, yeah. with any minus one damage armor contempt equivalent. Yeah. Um, you're going to massively nullify this yeah. army's ability to do damage. Yeah. They really struggle killing vehicles and knights. Their strength is tricks. Mm. Their strength is the having the toolbox. Uh, a array of stratagems enhancements allows yeah. them to survive longer than just a Terminator army. Yeah. So that's why I think they're strong yeah. is because it allows them to play the mission well, yeah. score the secondaries, and especially tactical cards if you play random rather than right. fixed. Okay. So okay. I think they're up there. They're one of my top picks as an army. Yeah. I love playing them, but I think my opponent would still have a good game against me because yeah. I'm not just going to table them in a turn. Fantastic. You right. know, I think there's a lot of decisions to make and as a player I love being able to provide that game for my opponent yeah. to help you go oh what do I do here like you know you're having a good game right yes yeah, when absolutely. when you're kind of really thinking about the plays that you're going to make yeah. yeah so that's why I love them all right well thank you so much for taking us through no problem Three nights well and if you enjoyed this at home let us know what you think is the most powerful combo in this book we'd love to hear your thoughts and if you did like this video make sure you like and subscribe as we'll be covering every single faction on how to play and our first initial thoughts and we'll see you on the next video.